Welcome back, Pit Crew, and this is going to be the first video of a multi-parter of the merger and rig build-out that's going on between me and Sean. And the reason why it's going to be a multi-parter is one, we want to be able to dive into the components that we're using for our rigs, how we built them, how we came about it, and kind of our mindset going into what we're wanting out of our rigs. And the second part is, you know, if you are looking into taking your rig to the next level of immersion, hopefully this video or these videos can help you out in the long run. <clears throat> And for me, building a rig is not just being able to put metal you know, together with nuts and bolts and everything like that. It's more of a journey. It's a journey that's fueled by passion, commitment, and that pursuit of being able to attain that near perfect immersion of being in a real race car. And on top of that, sim racing. You know, I tell this to all my friends and everybody in Discord. Sim racing to me is not just a hobby. It's that feeling. It's that adrenaline rush that you get when you're in the race car and you're racing other people out on track and also trying to perfect your, your driving. And then also getting that excitement, that happiness when you're able to beat your rivals out there on track. And that's why we're here today. We're here to be able to build an immersion rig or being able to build a portal, to being able to fulfill our racing dreams away from the stressors of life. And now this video is gonna be a two-parter because some people have asked for it. so. The first part of the video is me giving you a tour of my rig and my sim room of how everything is now. And then the second part is me going into the build of my center console, which is gonna you know, have my button box, my shifter, my handbrake, and a couple other things on it. So stay tuned. So welcome to my sim room. This is my zen room. This is a place where I go to get away from work and all of my other stressors and where I go to play my sim racing games, my other games, edit, make content for and everything for y'all. So just a quick view. It doesn't look like much, but it's gonna be changing pretty soon. On my wall, I've got my three favorite racetracks on there. Circuit de la Sarthe, Nürburgring, Nordschleife, and Spa Francochon. And I got these from this plate and they come in many different sizes and they got all sorts of other different kinds of racetracks on there. Yeah, they got many different options for you guys. My gaming desk, here's a, you know, an overview of my gaming desk. It's where I play my video games, do VR, edit my content. Everything is done at this desk right here. Now we're gonna take a quicker look. So like on the side of my desk, I've got my two favorite transformers, Optimus Prime and Starscream, along with a little model of my real car that I drive with a couple of Star Wars books. And you can see right there, Groot and the Joker, Bat Joker. Then going off onto my PC. So my PC, it's an i7 with a 3090. It used to be my old sim racing PC, but since then I've built a new, new one so this is kind of moved over to be my editing slash gaming pc where i've got it hooked up with the hp reverb g2 for vr with edifier speakers and i've had this pc for about four years now uh, so maybe in the future is going to be due for an upgrade but right now it does the job with everything that i need it to do and it works great for yeah for my editing and my normal gaming then we're gonna go look at my other side of my desk where I've got my monitors and everything. So I've got two 27 inch Innocent monitors. They're 1080p monitors, which again, I probably do need to upgrade these sooner so I can go towards either you know 1440p or 4K. And you can see down below, I got my Logitech G15 keyboard. I've had this thing for almost 15 years. It's never let me down. So I'm gonna keep this thing until it dies on me because I love this keyboard so much and it's never failed me at, you know, one bit at all. And then we're gonna see very soon is my mic that I use to record these videos. It's a Shure mic, it's the MVB that I use, it's the USB version. And yeah, it works great for anything that I need it to do. So for my rig, I've got a SimLab P1 that I've also went ahead and bought the P1X pedal plate for it. And the reason why I had to do that is because with the old pedal plate, it used to go over the profile and I wasn't able to fit my motion onto it. So I had to get the new P1X pedal plate and put that on there so my motion can fit onto it along with the standalone triple monitor stand. 
Now going on to my PC. So my PC is an i7 1390K. And with it, I've got a 4090 graphics card and 128 gigs of RAM. No overclocking done to it. And it's in, in a fractal case. And this is the PC that's used for my streaming, my gaming. Now for my monitors, so for my monitors, I'm using 32 inch BenQ monitors. They're 1440p with 120 re refresh rate. And on top, I've got just a 1080p Asus 27 inch monitor that I use. And that's probably gonna go away as I start building my rig because I've been finding out now that I've switched over to editing on my desk, I'm using that monitor less and less and it's just sitting there for now. So that's probably gonna go away as I start building more and more things around on my rig. Now going on for my motion platform, so I've got the Cubic QS210 motion system. It's the motion system that came out last year. And if you guys wanna check it out, it's uh, I've done a review on it, so I'm not gonna go too in depth into it, but it does have 1.5 inches of travel onto it. And it's a really, really great motion system. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. I love this thing. And so if you're looking at motion, I highly recommend taking a look at the Cubic systems. Now for my pedals, I'm using the Imsim Talento pedals. I got these pedals about two years ago and I've gone back and forth between these and the Venoms. Right now, those are my two favorite pedals to use. And I've also added onto it the new Symmagic Haptic Motors onto the brake pedal. I didn't really, because I do mostly do iRacing, I didn't really see a need to add the haptic pedals onto the throttle or the clutch. So for right now, it serves its purpose sitting on the brake to really make sure I get that ABS feeling when I'm driving the GT cars or any other car that's really using ABS. And again, I chose these pedals because of their high adjustability and how quick they are to adjust your pedals. And they are by far my favorite pedals that I've used that are load cell pedals on any system. So the wheel I'm using is the Evil Denso GT rim. It's a, essentially a clone of the Audi RA GT3 rim. And I love this rim, especially because it's a purple color. It's a really nice, solid built together rim. And this is what I use for all my racing, except when I'm doing either oval or dirt wear, like rally racing. So when I'm doing those sims right there, I'm using one of the sim race coach wheels that I've had for a very, very long time too. And all of that is attached to the original Simi Cube motor. It's a 30 new meter motor that I bought years ago. It was on Black Friday sale and it was almost about a third off. So yeah, so I'm using that still to this day because I mean, most to me, most DD wheel bases are essentially on par with each other. So seeing, you know, for me going from a Simi Cube 1 to a Simi Cube 2 wasn't really that big of an upgrade to justify the price. So yeah, that's why I'm still with my Simi Cube 1 motor. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta design your center console. So for me, because I got bought into buying a 3D printer on Black Friday sale, I'm gonna be using that to print out everything for my center console. And what I use to build everything, I use the Autodesk, but there's a lot of other different 3D programs you can use. But here's gonna be the general shape of how the print is going to be and how it's gonna look. Over here, I have my sequential shifter. This is where it's gonna go in this area right here. Right next to it is gonna be the handbrake. And then this gap over here, this is where it's gonna house my two stops for my motion and my direct drive. Then in the back, this is where my button box is gonna sit. And I didn't go too crazy with the design of it, like the width right here, this is pretty much essentially the width of the button box. My plan is to kind of route my wind sim through here so I can blow cold air on my face. But this is a design that I can go back and change later on because I am thinking about building a 2.0 version of the center console just after a few things that I've learned. But yeah, this is the shape. So now we're gonna get into actually printing and building the center console. So I've got all my parts 3D printed. So essentially what's gonna happen with my center console build is gonna have my handbrake, my shifter, my two E-stops, and then my button box is gonna go on top. So with all my parts 3D printed, 
I'm gonna make sure everything fits together and before I start gluing things, because this is where I'm gonna find out where if I'm gonna have some imperfections or if I need to go back, redo things, file, or maybe even reprint because something didn't print out properly. So what I'll do is I'm going to just kind of piecemeal things together so you guys kind of get an idea of how the console is gonna look. Yes, it's printed white, but eventually, not eventually, but I will wrap this in carbon fiber and potentially Alcantara, I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, to give it that nice, you know, car, you know, race car feel. So yeah, so let's put everything together. So I got my bottom part right here. I'm gonna fit that onto the handbrake. Again, this is based off of all the measurements that I took when I started building this print. So everything should slide in together. And eventually, like, what's gonna hold the center console together is really just how this is gonna bolt onto this metal plate that I've right hit right here. It's gonna go onto the side beam of my rig. So we'll fit everything together. Just put them all together. Oops. So what I did, just to give you guys a little idea of how to make things together, and again, if you know 3D printing, you know, I've got these little knobs right here that's gonna fit into these holes to kind of give it a more, you know, a better connection, or at least know how things are going to connect. So when I go back to blue, I know where everything is, and I don't mess up things when in the assembly process. Let's get that part there. This part, it's gonna go in outside. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect fit because everything is gonna get glued together. Just wanna make sure things connect for right now. All right, so here is everything. So this is really how the center console is gonna look. And now just imagine it wrapped in carbon fiber. So I move around a little bit, I can get a bit caught on it. So yeah, got my sequential shifter, my handbrake. Over here is where my stops are gonna be for my motion, for my direct drive wheel. Then on top is where my button box is gonna lie. And here, like because my button box isn't wide enough for this whole entire center console, I've kind of made, actually, let me turn it the other way. I've kind of made this groove right here, where this is where I'm gonna route my wind sim so I can actually also blow cool air on me because how the button box is, it's curved, kind of like if you've ever seen the button box for the Audi R8 GT3, where it's slimmed down below and then it widens as it gets up higher. So this is kind of going off of that right there and I can route my wind sim to blow the air on me and not take up too much space or look out of place. Yeah, so this is how it's gonna look. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take everything apart. I'm gonna start gluing things together. I'm gonna be using a two-stage epoxy. Uh, this stuff is really, really strong stuff. Again, it's gonna help make sure everything stays connected, nothing breaks. Uh, so yeah, I'll just do that. I'm not gonna show you guys, I'm not gonna show you me putting everything together and gluing it all together. I'll show you probably like the first piece. Because again, like I have to, I'm gonna glue the first piece, let it sit. It's gotta sit there for at least 15 minutes till it dries. It takes, you know, has that nice secure connection, and then I move piece by piece as I'm putting things together. So I'm gonna go ahead and take everything apart, so we can start the glue process. So with using two-stage epoxy, you've gotta be really careful. One, it lets off a really not so nice odor. And also like it's, it sets pretty quick. So make sure you don't get it on your hands. Don't get it on anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna squirt it a little bit. We're gonna squirt a little bit onto our piece of paper here. A little bit like that. We're gonna close it up because we don't want it to dry. And then we're just gonna use like, you just use anything that you have to kind of mix it up to make sure you activate uh, the glue. And then we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna start applying it to our first piece. Yeah, this stuff is not so nice smelling. Uh, I can, might have to start using 
a mask or something. I'm gonna have to use a mask for this to make sure I don't inhale these fumes that are coming out of it. Just apply like a, a nice amount to it. You just make sure you get it nice and covered. And then what we're gonna do is we'll grab it and then we'll just stick it onto our part. And then we'll just kind of let it sit. All right, we're just gonna let it sit like this. And then that's it, we're gonna let it dry. Oops, can't unplug, but there we go. Just clean it up a little bit, make sure we can kind of get in some of the grooves. We're just gonna let it sit, let it dry, and then we'll come back to it in like 15 minutes or so, and we'll be good to go. One eternity later. Now that I got everything glued together, and I've let it sit for about 24 hours to make sure the glue thickens and hardens and make sure it doesn't come apart when I start putting everything together, I got that part done. Now is the part where I'm gonna figure out how to wrap uh, this console piece right here. So I think what I'm gonna do on the outsides I'm gonna wrap that with the fake Alcantara. And then on the top, that's gonna to be my carbon fiber bits. But then on the back, I'm gonna have also the fake Alcantara because I want it to go with the button box that I have that's also wrapped in the Alcantara that you see right here. And that's gonna sit kind of like right around here. So I kind of want that all to blend together once I put everything together. So let's go ahead and let's start wrapping this baby up. I'm gonna, you know, I'll do this really quick. I'll fast forward, uh, do like kind of like time lapse thing on this as we're doing it, uh, so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing, get an idea of, of how things are gonna go. Uh, before I go, I kind of did some logo imprints. So like right here, I put the Sim Pit logo, and back here, KA Sim Racing. That's my my kind of logo. I might do in the future. I'm not entirely sure if I want to do it, but I might add LED lights on the inside so when I'm driving like you can see the simp you can see my logo right there <clears throat> as they're on the light. I might do that later on. I don't want to do it just yet but I just print them on there just in case. I can always go back in, cut this up and add uh, add everything onto it to make sure you know it works. Anyways let's start wrapping this baby up. We got everything done. Everything's all wrapped. Everything looks good. Everything is kind of, everything's already sticking. So yeah, I'm not too worried about like the white that's on the insides because that's gonna get covered up with all the equipment. So I make sure like the parts that are gonna get seen are actually the parts that look good. So to me, everything looks great. I'm gonna do just like a little bit of tidying up and cleaning up on it. And then we're gonna sit there and start putting everything together. So essentially I mounted my center console onto the side profile mount that comes with the SimLab P1, or it, you know you can see with any other rig that's out there that comes with that side mount and it fits nice and secure. There's no wiggle room or anything to it like that. So get it mounted up.
So what I have hooked up to my rig is a VESA mount that I got from simracingshop.de. It's essentially a VESA mount that most people use to mount their button boxes to their rigs. It's got three standard holes on it that will fit, you know, three different kinds of sizes. And for my button box, it's a button box that was made for me by Sim Racing for you. And it's a great button box. It's an Audi R8 style button box. And I love this thing and I can't wait to try this on my rig. So walking away from this build, I did learn quite a few things. You know, for this being my first official build for my rig and even for this channel. And I'm gonna leave you with a couple of thoughts to think about and some of the lessons that I learned, you know, as I go along further and building, building my rig even further. So the first part is think. When you begin designing your design for your rig or anything like that, make sure you're looking at the design from all angles, making sure you're looking at how your components are gonna fit, what spaces do you have, how things are gonna get measured out. So, you know, make sure, I always say like measure twice, cut once, and make sure you look at how everything's gonna get connected uh, together because there was a few times where things didn't print correctly and I had to go back and redo things. And the second thought I have is learn from your mistakes. Your first time is not always going to be perfect. And I did make a few misprints uh, and a few mistakes along the way because there was quite a few things I didn't pay attention to, like how my cables are going to get routed underneath the console. Or for example, like on the handbrake, there are bolts that stick out. I didn't measure for those as I started building the, the part that goes around the handbrake. The third point is patience. Don't try to rush your build because when you start rushing yourself, that is when the mistakes are gonna happen. So make sure you take your time, figure out how things are gonna get laid out. And when you start doing your building, your gluing, your wrapping, all that stuff, again, take your time to make sure everything gets put together perfectly. Another point is don't give up. These, you're gonna run into issues, you're gonna run into problems, and it's gonna be hard sometimes. So make sure you don't quit on it, make sure you persevere through it, because, or you know, talk to your friends or talk to your buddies or talk to people that have done DIYs before and get their opinions on, you know, on the things that you get stuck at. And the last part is enjoy the process. For me, this, rig, this build was awesome. I enjoyed every single minute of it. And I can't wait to start building the second part of my rig, which is probably gonna be the, the main dash area where I'm gonna have my flags, my center dash and everything like that. So I can't wait to start that one. But anyways, guys, that is it. That was you know a quick look at my sim rig room tour and then actually building the console. And if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. And if you got any questions on any DIYs, hit me up in the comments below or you can even join our Discord. We do have a DIY section in there for people to help you out. We've got a lot of DIYers in our Discord and they can help you get to the point where you're at. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you have fun racing. Later.